Cougs house. All right. Three Houston Cougars participated in the NFL Draft Combine last weekend, and I am kind of worried that at least a couple of them might have hurt their draft stock. So let's jump into it. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Ainsley, here to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater can step by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way you lay us on the Cougs in your newsfeed each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Welcome back to YouTube channel. It's good to see you again. We are over 750 subscribers, so thank you all for hitting subscribe and getting us to that moment. We're going to be giving away, I have it right here, uh, the... Galen Robinson designed Letterman jacket, right? Houston Cougars got the Cougar for the city across the back. We're giving that away to Burt Reynolds. Uh, I don't think that's the actual Burt Reynolds, but if it is, that's cool. If not, uh, Burt commented on several videos saying that he wanted the jacket. Um, and admittedly, lots of you commented lots of videos, and I appreciate all the comments, but there was a consistent theme there. Uh, and so, Burt, if you hear this or see this, comment uh below but i want you mostly find me on twitter at pains with 512 dme we'll get you the jacket we're gonna be giving away another big deal at 1000 followers we're working on what that is right now but i can assure you the faster we get there the bigger it is make sure you subscribe down below help us get there if at the end of the day you don't know what to say about the nfl draft combine you're kind of down on a couple of these guys like i kind of am tell me whether or not you eat one french fry at a time or multiple now I say all this, and I don't mean to sound super, super pessimistic, but I've got notes here about some draft combine results, both quantitative elements and qualitative elements about how some guys did. We had three Houston Cougars, Tank Dell, Clayton Toon, and various Owens in the NFL draft combine. And so I want to talk about how they did. I'm worried that they each might have hurt their draft stock. And the first segment, we'll talk about Tank. Second segment, Clayton. Third segment, Javarius. But... Each, I guess, kind of had certain like room to slide or to, to go forward. Let's start with Tank. So Tank measured in at 5'8", 165 pounds, 30 and a half inch arms. So wingspan, you know, fairly average for his height. Eight and five eighths inch hand. Uh, they measure hand from thumb to pinky as opposed to this way. I got told that when I was in college that my hands actually are kind of short vertically, but not. Anyway, um, so... You know, at 5'8", 165, he would have been the smallest wide receiver in the NFL last season. Uh, no NFL wide receiver started a game at under 170 pounds. Um, that's a, that's kind of a big deal, right? Now, you and I both know his name is Nathaniel, air quote, Tank Dell, because of how tough he is in spite of being so, so small. But size does matter in this game to some degree. So he's got to find ways to work through and around that size deficiency. Um, if I'm looking at ways he can get better by the combine, ways he can improve his stock by the by the pro day, I should say. Houston has their pro day at the end of March, March 20. I've seen both 23rd and 24th. Um, I think the latest I saw was the 23rd. So the if they if he wants to get better and improve his stock by 23rd, he needs to get over that 170 mark, and he's only got a couple weeks to do it. Now we know you can inflate with water weight and like you know, wear a little bit of extra stuff on your clothes or like you can get a couple pounds here and there. I don't think it's that far out of reach, but again, the smallest wide receiver to start a football game in the NFL last season was 171 pounds. He, he can't be smaller than that guy going in. Um, it's just not a great look, not a great thing. Now, can he continue to put on muscle mass? Absolutely. Um, I, I just worry that that's going to come back and haunt him some. Um, the big deal, though, for a guy that is so small would be, you would think, that 40 time. Tank Dale ran a 4.49 officially. Now, I think most circulated times were the unofficial 4.50. Uh, that, again, when they redid the digital clock and watched the video, those kind of things, it came back at a 4.49 officially. Um, and I thought that was interesting because uh, that, I guess, I'm getting that through Pro Football, Football Pro Football Focus and the NFL's official website. Um, so double checking things there. Um, again, double checking things there. He ran the first 
almost nine yards, but really the first 10 yards and 149 is 10 yard split, 1.49 is 10 yard split. That means in the latter part of his 40, he was flying. And I think that's why a lot of people watched the clip online and were so surprised that he got that time that was about a 4.5 because it looked like at his top speed, he's moving as fast as any other wide receiver out there. Because he was. The deal was he had such a bad start out the blocks. And I don't know if that like air quote injury that kept him out of the senior bowl might have been legit. Maybe he is coming back from that. That explosion out the blocks wasn't quite there. Or maybe he's just not a natural track guy at the blocks. He needs to continue to work on that time. But another thing he needs to work on by the U of H's pro day is continue to push himself to be ha- to have more of that track speed out the gates. You and I both know that there aren't a whole lot of times you get down a three point stance to take off for forty yards in the NFL in an NFL, NFL football game, right? Like I I get all of that. I don't need you. To, I mean, go off in the comments, I guess, if you want. But that's not what I'm worried about. NFL scouts are going to find ways to not pick guys. They see 5'8", 165, and is not one of the most elite speed guys in the NFL. Those are a bunch of reasons to not pick guys. Now, will he still get drafted? Absolutely. He's got that top-end speed when he's really moving. And, frankly, in all the ball drills he did at the Combine, he excelled. He caught balls out the, out of the uh, in and out of breaks when they ran uh, routes on air. He did great in the gauntlet catching drill. He caught all the balls with his hands away from his body, got upfield quick, in and out of his breaks quick. Like That's what he does. He plays football really, really well. He is projected currently pro, for pro football focus. They do like a, a box and whisker plot. Um, his 50% mark, meaning his most likely draft position on pro football focus, is at the 76th draft pick. In the current draft order, admittedly, these things would change based on trades and things like that. That would slot him in Baltimore, and that would be epic, right? To have that run game condense guys in the box, and then you got him and working in that slot area to kind of take some of the like, pressure off of Lamar Jackson. Hopefully, he's still there. Um, those kinds of things, right? I think it would be a great landing spot. Other teams in that area, right? If you're looking at like the 76 is that average, where else could he fall? Um, 73 is Indianapolis, 74 is Atlanta, 75 is Denver, 77 is Minnesota, and 78 is Cleveland. Um, without knowing what Indian- Indianapolis does at their quarterback spot, I actually do think that uh, the better option for him would be Minnesota, right? Minnesota, he gets to go work with Kirk Cousins, who's good. Right. Uh, But also just play with Justin Jefferson on the opposite. Like they can work in tandem. They can work opposite. Right. He'll get a little easier coverage his first year in the league. And frankly, um, since he's like not getting the double things like that, he probably put a better statistical first season or two out there and help himself out on the second contract. Right. Because at that 76, 77, 78 spot in the NFL draft the money is not going to be as great as it could be if he were to get a second contract and get some real cash out of this thing, right? We want to make, we want to see the guy make a living out of this, living out his dream. Um, I think he'll get a chance, but I think Minnesota at the 77 spot actually might be the best chance he does it. Um, other things I was seeing people cite as reasons to not take him was his 7.7 drop rate in college. I mean, he dropped 7.7% of catchable balls while at U of H. Um, he had nine drops last season, uh, 21 over the last two years. Um, admittedly, I wonder when you see the eight and five eighths inch hand, like, like is that going to be something that like, people try and correlate and put together and like slight him on? Um, I guess I'm putting two and two together. I didn't see those linked anywhere, but I saw the drop rate and I saw the hand size. Like, oh, I wonder if they're going to try and put those two things together. Um, I also wonder if they're going to look at all the underneath stuff he does and say maybe he doesn't have the top end speed we think he does playing in the American Athletic Conference because of his 1,400 yards last season, 366 were what we would call a deep ball yard or deep ball catch, meaning he catched the ball in a deep route. Um, Again, per pro, pro football focus, but that to me says that he's getting open underneath and then wiggling away from guys as opposed to beating people over the top and taking off, right? Admittedly, he is the safest draft prospect on the Houston Cougars in the 2023 draft. Um, at the combine, he, again, did perform well in the ball drills, and we saw the tape when we talked about the senior bulk uh, workouts and stuff like that. He does well when it's time to play football. But unfortunately, people use these measurables as reason to tell us that they can't play football. And so I need to see him, again, improve the time out the blocks at that 40 time a little bit between now and the pro day and, like, put on, like, six 
good pounds. Now, I've put on six good pounds a lot lately. <laughs> a lot of times in the last few years, I should say. Um, I need to see him do it. Now, I don't think you should put on the same six pounds I have, but come on, Tank. We need, need, need a little bit. Need a little bit. Help yourself out here, I promise. In the second segment, I want to talk about a Houston Cougar uh, that I thought was going to have a better weekend than he did, and I thought would be climbing up draft boards better than he did in Clayton Toon. Before we get to that, we do need to talk about Built Bar. Remember I just told you that I've gained six pounds a few different times? Well, Built Bar is someone I'm working with to try and help me fix that, right? It's a delicious treat without all the fat and calories, and you've got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I'm telling you, my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year. And if you're like me, you eat health, you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise on taste, then, man, I've got just the thing for you. you got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate that's right real chocolate and so they come in unbelievable flavors like churro peanut butter brownie coconut almond i'm not sure how bill does it but these bars taste like candy bars while maintaining amazing macros and what's even better is that they are healthy only 130 calories and four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein in most bars and now you don't need to wait around to get a box for years we've been talking about ordering your built bars through built.com but now you can get them at like a walmart or sam's club that's right head to the nearest walmart today walk to the pharmacy section pharmacy section make sure you find it and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a, a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. The coconut puffs are pretty good, I got to say. Uh, if you're close to Sam's Club and run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro, you can thank me later. I do like those coconut puffs. I also really, really like the coconut almond. So make sure you go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club or Built.com and get yours today. All right, so I said in the second segment, I'm going to talk some about uh, Clayton Toon. And I should point out like what his measurables were as well. He came in at just almost exactly 6'3", even 220 pounds, decent size. Uh, arm length was 31 and 3, 31 and 3 eighths inches, and his hand size was 9 and 3 eighths inches. Um, Toon did not bench, which is normal, I think, for a quarterback that is not like thinking about like the Tim Tebow running guys over kind of stuff, or Tim Tebow also was like looking to maybe change positions, right? Um, he ran a 4.6440, had a 10 foot two broad jump and a 37 and a half inch vertical jump. Now, I know that Anthony Richardson, quarterback out of Florida, stole all the headlines as far as athletic quarterbacks go. But in all the measurable instances and all those things put together, Pro Football Focus and NFL.com both have their own algorithms for figuring out, like, based on these statistics, who is the most athletic guy per position group there? And they both ranked Clayton Toon second. Second on the list behind Anthony Richardson. Now, is Anthony Richardson a generational athlete? Absolutely. Did he set records in those things? Absolutely. But Clayton Toon is the second best athlete in this quarterback class per their own statistics, per their own data. And I'm telling you, he's going to do better when they come to the pro day in Houston. So I thought that was fascinating. I also think it's interesting that, again – all of this being quantitative data, right? Looking at like actual numbers on things. He performed better than like Danny Dimes in New York, the New York Giants quarterback did. Danny Dimes has got a second quarterback. So I'm starting there for a little while. And remember like everyone's like, oh my gosh, he's got more speed than we thought he did. Oh my gosh, he's leaping the end zone from farther out than we thought he would. Oh my gosh, he's running around defenders in a way. Like he does all those things scrambling the football. Clayton Toon's got more athleticism than him, Right. Danny Dimes was a first round quarterback. Whatever you think about that draft, wherever they took all the kind of the criticisms, I probably valid, but he was a first round quarterback. And we're looking at Clayton Toon as being like picked in the 200s, right? I, I'm, I'm at a loss. He's being consistently projected as a third day draft pick. Um, Pro Football Focus in the same box and whisker plot has him his 50th percentile pick at 221 admittedly a great situation to be in. That's the San Francisco 49ers as of right now. Um, San Francisco has both 220 and 221. I could absolutely see in there picking him uh, because he's an athletic quarterback. We saw there with a late round draft pick and a quarterback last year with, with Brock Purdy. They'll have some indecision. They also, for whatever reason, have bad luck with quarterback injuries and need some guys in camp and on the roster, right? Um, if you're looking around that draft pick, 217 is Detroit. 218 is Los Angeles Rams. Uh, 219 is the Titans. I mentioned 220, 221 are both the Niners. 222 is Jacksonville. 223 is Cleveland. I wonder if it's not 220, 221 with the Niners. Is he a good fit in Los Angeles? Los Angeles had the Rams had a number of issues last year with quarterback, keeping guys healthy. 
Um, obviously, Stafford is getting up there in age. Baker Mayfield has had his handful of injuries. They like kind of cycled through guys last year. Obviously, no one's ever going to criticize that Jared Goff trade they made because they did win a Super Bowl in pulling in Matt Stafford. However, it looks like time's already expired on like how good that trade was. And so, like, are they looking to move on? And can they get like a guy like Clayton in a late round to come in and compete for a spot? Right. Um, I think the other thing that's interesting is like you and I both knew that Clayton Tune is a great person. He's very personal. Like he's not personable in like a like hoppy jolly sense. He's probably a little more introverted than that, but he's a good lead in the locker room. He's a clean guy, a like well kept guy. He's not gonna like go out and cause any trouble in the locker room. He's not gonna cause a big stir if you pull him in. He's gonna p- compete for a starting spot, but also not gonna cause a big stir if you give it to somebody else in his rookie season. He's not that kind of kid. I think that makes him a great pick as an NFL backup quarterback, especially if you bring him to a situation where he doesn't have to start right away as a rookie or even necessarily compete to start right away as a rookie, although I'd like to see him get a shot. Because he's got a cannon. He threw for 4,000 yards last season. Um, his grade under pressure is, I guess, what's worrying people, it sounds like, like how he plays under pressure, because he blatantly doesn't have that much tape under pressure at U of H. Right? He was under pressure very little at Houston because the offensive line for an American Athletic Conference offensive line, did very, very well. People are kind of harping on a couple of clips in early parts of the season against Kansas, when Kansas was really rolling against Tech, Big 12 opponent, right? They're looking at those games and nitpicking some plays about things he did under pressure and how that actually hurts his season-long average on like pro football focus analytics against under pressure kind of situations. And not necessarily looking at it as like, hey, here's how he grew up over the season because they're really, really focused on those two games. And honestly, he went under as much pressure in the latter third of the season. So while I understand like why the statistics lean that way, I would hope the qualitative eye test would show you that that's because his offensive line was that good. There would be at least two guys from the Houston Cougar offensive line drafted and next year's NFL draft book it, write it down right now. Come back to me and talk to me in a year. I'm telling you it's going to happen. Right. But with that said that in the future, et cetera, Clayton Toon is getting dinged because of that play under pressure that he just didn't have. Again, we have analytical statistical data about him playing one pressure late, later in the season. And we have very simple raw data that tells us he's a good athlete. I think, I think that's overblown. And I really, really hope he has a good pro day of throwing the football. Now, Quarterbacks don't always throw the football at the NFL Combine. Clayton Tune elected to to try and help himself out, right? I think that's a gift and a curse because there's going to be some throws you're just off that are, like, frankly, more like timing routes, and you're throwing them to guys you don't have rehearsed timing with. I think he will do a lot better at the pro day throwing the football, and I anticipate him having some wows and oohs and ahs and maybe moving him up ahead of that, that initial draft reading after a good pro day later this month. Um as recently as what day was that? Um, the 28th. So around senior bowl kind of time, right? He was actually being looked at as much more in like the 175 to 180 draft uh, draft picks. If you look at pro football focuses like trends, how they track a guy that's how his draft stock has gone over time. Um, that still kind of has him the same couple of teams, weirdly enough. It's just like a, a full round and a half earlier. Um, and so I wonder if the same fit, the same reasoning, the same logic is happening just at the team's earlier pick, right? Um, and just being more valuable there. I will say that, like, his size, as far as NFL stuff goes, is, like, good, not great. Like, he is the size of an NFL quarterback, and so I guess he's not wowing people from that sense. Um, but he's also not too little in the same way that Tank is or that, frankly, like, a lot of other U of H quarterbacks have been in the uh, case Keenum being one, right? Like you've seen Houston produce good quarterbacks that had other things working against them in a way that Clayton Dune doesn't have, right? Like Keenum played for Holgerson at Houston. I mean, the Holgerson was offensive coordinator at that point at the head coach, but like he's been totally fine, right? Clayton played for Holgerson at the University of Houston, put up good numbers at the University of Houston. He's one of three quarterbacks to throw for 10,000 yards over the course of his career at Houston, right? Why isn't it like, oh, Keenan's been a career backup, made a lot of money playing across the year league for a lot of years. Why isn't that what we also see Clayton Toon doing? Um, I digress. We'll get obviously close to draft and talk more about him as we get there. But he is not, those are not the only two Houston Cougars in the NFL combine or that were in the NFL combine over the weekend. Javarius 
Javarius Owens represented the defense as well. And I want to talk a little bit about what he did because I think, weirdly, he may be the biggest diamond in the rough in this whole thing. But first, let's talk a little bit about FanDuel. Speaking of diamonds in the rough, FanDuel is a great way to place your sports bets, and it's our sports betting partner here at Locked On. Um, now, it's the midway point of the NBA season. It's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because new customers got a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's bonus bet back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can bet on everything from money line to point scores and threes drained. Here's the deal, Houston fan. I'm looking at this Nets-Rockets game tonight. Tuesday night, right? I think tip-off is 8 o'clock local time, like 8.08 local time or something like that, right? They have the Nets favored by just seven points. I can tell you for free, Mikhail Bridges and those guys, like Jalen Green's playing great. I'm sure they'll be like, I I hope they prove me wrong. I don't hope they prove me wrong too much because I do want to get a victor win by Yama. But... I do imagine this is a more than seven point game. So I think I take Brooklyn and the points there because Houston's playing for Victor. Brooklyn doesn't have their draft picks, notably because Houston does. Um, they're trying to show off what their assets look like in person. Um, the more intriguing bet to me, though, was if you go down or ask for first half winner and for a full time winner parlay, where you're parlaying what, who's winning at halftime and who's winning at the end of the game. The tie at halftime with the Brooklyn Nets winning is plus 2,800. Now, I'm not going to be silly and take the tie with Houston Rockets winning at plus 4,900, but I do think you'll see a different effort in the second half out of both Houston and Brooklyn in that basketball game because Brooklyn could understandably take them lightly in the first half. You could also have Houston just like kind of come down to earth in the second half of a basketball game, et cetera, right? It's a home game, a later night game for Houston. So like they might have some crowd there early that like trickles out late. Cause it's a work night or whatever. Right. Um, all it is to say that at plus 2,800, I feel like you got to drop like a C note or something like that. Right. Like that, that is just such crazy odd from that I could conceivably see happening. Like Brooklyn's still winning, but it being close enough to have a tie at halftime. I mean, KPJ is back. Jalen green is back. Like, that feels silly not to take. I'm telling you to take it. I'm telling you to take it at FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel and official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right. So. I said I want to talk some about Jerry Owens, who represented the defense at the Combine. Now, before I get into things he did well and things he didn't do well and things he did work on before Pro Day, I was surprised that uh, D'Anthony Jones and Derek Parrish did not get the invite. So while we're looking forward to Pro Day, that's a big, big deal for those two guys because that will be their chance to show off their strength, their size, their speed in front of NFL scouts in a way that they didn't get to do um, – I didn't rant and rave too much about it when it happened because only so many guys get invited to the combine, right? Parrish missed a lot of this past season hurt. Um, frankly, the Anthony Jones spent a lot of this past season double teamed. And so I, I guess I get it. Uh, we talked about disrespect for the Houston D line at end of season awards kind of se- time of the year. Right? So I, I get it, but those two guys do need to have big showings at the pro day as well. Even if they didn't have, a chance to do it at the combine. Javarius Owens did show up at the combine and measured in at six foot even, 195 pounds, uh, nine and a half inch hands, 32 inch arms. Um, I have to say, I operated the last several years under the impression he was more like six two. I don't know why that was. I don't think six foot's too short to play that free safety kind of spot in the NFL. Um, I was just surprised that's what it was. He put up 15 reps in the bench press and a 10 5 broad jump, which it demonstrated that, like, great explosion for what it's worth only six safeties broke 10 foot in the broad jump so it's pretty strong 37 and a half inch vertical explosive vertically as well um and has been mentioned by several draft experts as a quote day three sleeper has a knack for the football i think people like that we saw him at u of h force some fumbles and like the memphis game and an smu game and you know he's great at that like wrap up tackle where he's like grabbing the arm and like pulling down and and the ball pops out kind of stuff he does the very acrobatic pick against texas tech against donovan smith who's now at houston which is a little awkward um 
I think it's interesting that he also mentioned in his availability that he talked with uh, the Niners and the Cowboys. Typically, a guy with his kind of draft grade doesn't get a whole lot of one-on-one attention always. Um, and I think he did do a good job of moving up over the course of the weekend. Um, by the end of the weekend, Pro Football Focus had him at pick the 50% land of the box and whisker plot and have a pick 212. Uh, that leads him to the Los Angeles Rams as well. Uh, the Rams have picked to 11 to 12. They also have uh, around that. You have the New England Patriots at 210 to get to play with Marcus Jones. Uh, 209 would be Cincinnati. 213 would be Atlanta and 214 would be LA Chargers. Um, I, I think he's a Patriot at 210 if he's in this area. Um, I really, really think that he's the kind of guy that, you know, honestly, I don't know what his speed will be. He didn't run a 40 at the combine. Um, I could see though with him, him like being kind of, kind of a corner in some ways, kind of a safety in some ways, uh, ball skills here, right? To that, like I could see him becoming a Patriot, not just in the same way I saw Marcus Jones being a Patriot last year, which worked out pretty well. Um, but I, I just feel like he's kind of got that Patriot vibe to him and that he does things the right way a lot of the time admittedly uh, one thing that is not very patriots about him that might prove me wrong that some draft skip draft uh, people are skeptical about is that he missed 16 tackles that's 17.8 percent of the available tackles to him last season um he plays the ball and and that gambling i think looks great when it works and doesn't when it doesn't right so admittedly that that's probably working against him some when i'm looking at him to move up or improve his draft stock between now and the uh, pro day is he's got to, got to, got to run a 40, right? Guys at his position, he's playing a, as he got older, he moved further and further away from line scrimmage as a safety, right? Went from a down in the box kind of guy to slowly work himself out. I guess also played some corner along the way. Um, I, I feel like at a guy that's got that kind of deep ball coverage has to show some speed, I don't know why he didn't run at the combine. That's the fact that he wasn't quite ready to run, put up a good time. I think he's got to put something in that four five range. Obviously something the four four would be great, but just something to show he's got that straight line speed to where if someone beats the corner deep, he can go tra- track down the ball and go get there, um, turn his hips and go right. Um, for whatever reason, that seems really, really important to NFL scouts with these kind of deep ball safety kind of guys. And I know he does a lot of other things really, really well, but he's got to put something in the books for his 40 time to me to improve his draft stock and maybe get up into the 100s, like the 180s and 90s on his draft stock. I think he'll be an NFL player, and I think, frankly, he might get a second contract. But to improve his draft stock and give himself the best chance, I think he's going to have to put something down on paper the 40 time at the Pro Day. So we'll see what that looks like. Obviously, with the Pro Day being at the end of the month, that's right in the midst of March Madness. And so we're like, we'll be on all kinds of different things talking about Houston Cougars. But we're talking about all things Houston Cougars all the time. So hit me up at Painsworth512, P A I N S W R T H 512 on Twitter, Instagram. Be real. We got a TikTok. We posted one TikTok. We're going to keep posting those throughout the tournament. Um, but all things on Painsworth512, P A I N S W R T H 512 on all social media handles. Happy to talk Cougar basketball, football, baseball is coming up, NFL draft, NBA draft. We're going to have a couple guys in that too. Uh, Rockets, Astros, Texans, whatever things you can talk about, I'm going to talk about it at Painsworth 512, P-A-I-N-S-W-R-T-H 512. Uh, thank you all so much for being locked on Cougs, your first listen of the day today. If you're looking for a second listen, there is Locked On NFL Draft. They talk about a lot more things besides just the Cougars, but Tank Dell is a name worth keeping in mind as you listen to that show, so make sure you listen to Locked On NFL Draft wherever you get your podcasts as well. Locked On Cougs is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.